Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and today we're going to be upgrading a portion of my network to 10 gigabit. I've got myself some 10 gigabit gear here, along with a Mac Mini that I reviewed a few weeks ago that also came equipped with a 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And my mission today is to interconnect all of this stuff with my existing Cat5e wiring. Uh, we'll see exactly what we can expect over Cat5e. They usually recommend Cat6 or 7 for 10 gigabit technology, but I'm curious to see what I can get out of my existing wiring first. And what we'll be doing is hooking up my MacBook Pro here with a Thunderbolt adapter, which gives us 10 gigabit uh, speeds over Thunderbolt 3. So it'll be a fun little project here to get everything going. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased everything you're about to see here in this video with my own funds, including the adapters and the switch here, along with the Mac Mini that will be part of this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how all of this stuff is going to work. So let's take a look at the hardware that I purchased for this project. And unfortunately right now, 10 gig ethernet is not cheap. Gigabit is like dirt cheap right now, but this stuff is going to set you back a bit. Uh, so the adapter is from Akidio. It costs about $176. It is not quite yet dongle size, although I would imagine in a few years, this 10 gig stuff will get shrunken down to that size. Uh, so this is what we're going to be connecting the MacBook Pro with. I've had very good luck with Akidio Thunderbolt products in the past. Uh, we used their uh, eGPU enclosure a few times on a few different videos here on the channel. They make good stuff and they're now part of another company called Otherworld Computing. And then for the network switch, I picked up this one from Netgear. It's a five port, 10 gigabit switch. And there aren't too many of these out yet. Uh, that are inexpensive or relatively inexpensive and have multiple RJ45 connectors. Uh, so this was about $385, if I'm not mistaken, and I've got four uh, 10 gig RJ45 ports here. They call it 10G base T, and they also have an additional fiber optic port here too that you can use with an adapter, so you have some ability to uh, connect up with other 10 gig devices. And right now I only have two things to interconnect at that speed, although my plan would be at some point to get some kind of network attached storage device that would also provide 10 gig. Now I'm effectively only going to have three of these four ports available because one of these ports will connect up to my other switch so we can bring in the rest of the network. So basically what's going to happen here is the two Macs are going to communicate with each other at 10 gig but if they want to get something from another device on the network, it's going to pull that in at one gigabit. And that's fine because every other device on the network is at a maximum of one gigabit. So what we're going to do now uh, is take this thing and put it into my equipment closet, get it hooked up to the network. And then we're also going to patch in uh, the two ports that we'll be connecting our other 10 gigabit devices to. And we'll see if we can actually get everything working over Cat5e. The longest cable run we're going to be looking at here is probably 25 or 30 feet, uh, which is well within what I'm reading should be fine for 10 gigabit over Cat5e. Uh, if you want to go longer distances, then you really should go with a Cat6 or a Cat7 cable. But I think for my uses here in the studio, we should be fine, but we'll find out in a second. Let's get this thing hooked up. So here is the network switch, and it looks like the Mac Mini is already successfully connecting at 10 gigs. Uh, with both of these green lights on, it indicates that it is a 10 gig connection, so that's a good sign. Uh, next, I'm going to hook up the Mac and uh, its Thunderbolt connector here. Let's see if we get the same results on that. We'll let that uh, hopefully spin up there, and we should hopefully see two green lights there as well, so that's good. And now we're going to connect up the rest of my network. I've got this cable plugged into my main network switch. Uh, this should be a different color because this will be gigabit. So let's see what we get here. And yep, we've got two orange lights there to indicate that we are connected via gigabit. So let's run back to the desk now and start doing some network tests and see what kind of speeds we're going to get. So we're back on the desk here and the Thunderbolt adapter is lit up. Uh, we have an orange light here to indicate that it is also reporting 10 gigabits as its connection. And we're going to switch over now to my control panel just to make sure my Thunderbolt adapter is the lead one here. So we're good there. I'm also going to just jump over to my web browser and make sure that we're also able to get on the internet. 
again through that gigabit connection back to the rest of my network and this looks like it is working as expected. It's not any faster of course than my regular network usually is because again my internet speed hasn't changed here. We're just changing the speed of the transfer rates between this computer and the Mac Mini on the other side of the room. So now I'm going to run a little test here called an iPerf test. And what this will do is just push data over to that Mac Mini and see how fast it will do that data transfer. So we're going to run the test here. I haven't even tested this yet. So this is the first experience of 10 gigabit ethernet here for me as well. And as you can see here, we are getting a very big number here, uh, 9,398 megabits per second. So very close uh, to that 10 gigabit number uh, over Cat5e cable. This is very encouraging. And we'll let this run for a little bit here to see if we see any reduction over time. But I am very encouraged here, uh, starting off with these numbers. Typically, we see about 940 or so megabits per second. Uh, now we're looking at 9,402 in this case. So we're seeing a huge speed improvement here between these two computers. All right, that definitely worked better than I expected. Let's jump back over to the test though, and let's do a reverse here. Let's pull data from the Mac Mini on the other end of the room over to this computer, and hopefully we will see the same transfer rates here. Uh, this one's looking a little bit slower, which was interesting. I wasn't expecting this result. Uh, again, this could be just the wiring distance here that might be coming into play, but we're definitely seeing a bit of a reduction uh, in that speed. And I might experiment a little bit later in the video with some shorter cable lengths and maybe bring both devices very close to each other here to see if we might see a better result. But still, uh, this is much, much faster than what I typically get uh, over my gigabit network. And just for comparison, uh, let me do that here real quick. We'll just stop the test and I will uh, connect up to my other Mac that is just connected to the gigabit network. We'll run this test again. And as you'll see here, uh, this test will run again about 940 or so megabits per second. So we really are getting a tremendous speed improvement here. Uh, it looks like at the moment I'm getting better speeds pushing data over to that Mac Mini versus pulling that data back. So I need to play around here a little bit, maybe upgrade some of the wiring here to Cat 6 or Cat 7, but still I am very satisfied here with the result. All right, so now we are going to write out some files to the Mac Mini over this 10 gigabit network, and I'm running with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test right now. As you can see, we're writing at about 400 megabytes per second to the Mac's internal drive. If I was sitting on this computer, I would be seeing Mac speeds at around 1.2 gigabytes per second. Here we're getting about 400 megabytes per second, which is about 3.2 uh, gigabits per second. So not as fast as our uh, simulated test was here of the network uh, using the AFP file sharing protocol, we're seeing uh, lower speeds. And we might wanna test this with some CAT6 wiring to see if perhaps we get better performance out of this real world example. But still, this is much, much faster than I typically see on my gigabit network, which usually maxes out around 100 megabytes per second. All right, one last thing to check out on our CAT5e wiring, and that is this. 4K multi-camera edit file that we like to test when we're looking at external drives. Now, I just opened this up on a Thunderbolt drive on that Mac Mini on the other side of the room, and let's see if it's able to keep up here. Now, typically, if we're not getting enough bandwidth, uh, this video will start breaking up and not playing properly because we are actually running two 4K streams simultaneously. But it appears to me that this is working pretty well here. I'm not seeing it... Uh, dropping any frames, and it looks like it's possible we could actually do a, a multi-camera 4K edit here over the network, which was uh, partly my objective here in getting some of this 10 gig stuff working. So this is a good sign that we're off to a good start. Now what I want to do next is connect everything a little bit closer to uh, each other. So we're going to go and get some Cat6 cables. They're waiting for me at my mailbox on the other end of town, so I'm going to grab those. We're gonna bring the Mac Mini over here with the Switch and the MacBook Pro and see if we get better speeds for both that drive test as well as that synthetic test that we ran a little bit earlier. Let's take a look. All right, so I've got the devices now connected right next to each other. We've got these three foot 
uh, Cat 6A cables interconnecting everything. And we're going to run back over to our synthetic test first. Uh, once again, we will have the MacBook transmit data to the Mac Mini, and we're getting about the same speeds we were before, about 9.4 uh, gigabits per second here, which again is significantly faster than what we had before on gigabit. I'm going to stop this test now and then go in the opposite direction because remember, this was the test that was going slower. And if we run this now, let's see if we do any better. No, we're doing about the same as we were before. But what I do want to do is run back real quick to that disk speed test and see if we get the same results. All right, so now it looks like the disk speed test is performing about where we were before, roughly about 400 megabytes per second or so as the test here is running. So we're not seeing any real uh, performance differences here, even with shorter cables that are the recommended cable type. Again, CAT 6A here. So I think if you're going uh, relatively short distances with CAT 5E, you should be okay. But when you go out longer, you'll have some issues. And clearly some of the performance issues we're having uh, in some of our testing here is probably one of the kinks that has to get worked out. It could be a driver issue on one of the devices. It could be the adapters. It could be the switch. Who knows, because I have to probably get uh, a third device into the mix here to start doing some more troubleshooting. But nonetheless, uh, we are seeing significantly faster speeds, both uh, on short runs here, but also over longer runs on Cat 5e cable. I will put a link down below to some information about cable types and what works best over uh, our new 10 gig world here, but we're definitely seeing some, again, major improvements here, and I'm looking forward to integrating this now into the rest of my network. We'll have more on this to come. I am sure a lot of you will have some thoughts that you can leave down in the comments section for me to try, and maybe we'll do a follow-up video as I continue to build out the 10 gig portion of my network. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.